Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining. Um, I'm going to wait uh, for about maybe 30 more seconds, and then we're going to get started. So you can, um, thank you, Yuma. Uh, you can put any comments you have in the chat. And towards the end, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the questions that we have, and then we will address it uh, shortly. So <clears throat> give me another five seconds, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. But I thank you very much for joining today. Um, can you hear me clearly? Um, please, could you put that in the in the chat? Then also let me know if you see my screen. Okay. So, uh, Yuma, can you hear me clearly? Before I get started. Okay. All right. So I'm going to present my screen now, and we're going to get started. So, if you have any questions, you can keep it uh, for the end. And then we can, you know, discuss all the questions you have. All right. So let me get started. I'm going to share my screen now. So um, thank you very much for tuning in today. I'm very grateful for your time and your participation uh, at this event. So in this particular talk, we're going to be covering how to get started with uh, event stream processing on Microsoft Azure using uh, Apache Flink. So my name is Israel Ekbo, and I'm a cloud solutions architect with Microsoft Global Partner Solutions in the US. And in my role at Microsoft, I help customers and partners to develop solutions that work on Microsoft Azure. So this could be service partners, this could be ISV partners. So the service partners, they build solutions for other customers and the ISV partners build their own solutions that they sell to customers to consume. So that is what I do. And uh, Apache Flink, Apache Kafka, uh, Pulsar, Spark, all those uh, open source projects are things that I work on from time to time. And I help to guide these customers on how to do that successfully on Azure. So that's a little bit about myself. Uh, for today's talk, I'm going to be covering some of the motivations for doing events and processing. Um, and then we're going to uh, take a look at what it is very briefly, just in case this is your first time hearing about it. And then how it's different from batch processing. Then we're going to take a look at some of the options we have today for deploying on Microsoft Azure to deploy Apache Flink on Microsoft Azure. So this is not um, a fixed list. This is constantly you know, changing. And from time to time, we do get input from people and you know things could change in the future. But for today, I'm going to tell you some of the options we have today uh, to deploy Apache Flink on, on Azure. And then I'm going to talk about some of the integration opportunities where you can integrate between the Apache Flink uh, architecture and components and some of the Microsoft, Microsoft Azure ecosystem uh, platform products like Blob Storage, Cosmos DB, you know, and so on. And then towards the end, we're going to cover some uh, steps on how you can take a look at some of these resources for getting started. And then we'll also share a form where if you're considering doing Apache Flink on Azure and you have a particular use case, where you need certain deployment options or you need certain integration opportunities, you can reach out to us there and we can work with you on that. So I'm going to get started with some of the motivations for doing uh, stream processing. So we have several uh, use cases uh, on Microsoft Azure where we have partners that are working with us from retail, where they have uh, you know inventories to manage, where they have rewards for their customers or deals that they want to send you know in near real time. So these customers are you know moving away from batch workloads where you know they will do the processing once a week sometimes once a day to doing it in near real time where depending on the customer proximity depending on what's going on with the inventory they want to do that in in, in real time we also have financial service customers and healthcare customers uh, where they're handling claims and payments and they want to do this in near real time so they want to separate all these components from doing um, orchestration to moving towards you know you know um, the, the choreography strategy where you have you know screen processing handling all of that and then everything is running effectively and they're able to deliver more value for their customers. Um, IoT and manufacturing customers are also running uh, Flink you know on Azure. So this is something that is um, caused because 
Um, it is not because these vendors or these customers or these companies, they want to do uh, stream processing, but it is because the expectations of the customers have changed and things are not, you know, really working well from the customer perspective if it's done in batch, uh, batch mode because it could lead to, uh, you know, uh, uh, poor customer experience. So having stream processing as, as one of your um, strategies would help you to set yourself apart from your business, uh, from, from your competitors. And that is what is driving all these custom, uh, all these uh, customers today on Azure to move towards stream processing. So I just wanted to cover that so that if you're wondering why I'm talking about this, it is because right now Azure is one of the number, number one destinations for stream processing. And this is what I'm seeing from the you know, customer perspective. So how does it work? We typically have something or an agent or an application that is generating events and sending that to a system for temporary buffering or storage. And then we have um, certain uh, systems like Apache Flink or sometimes Kafka Streams would process, the, uh, would, would, would process these events. And then we also have other systems that are consuming it. So these components have to be in place uh, for us to do stream processing effectively. With Apache Flink, because Apache Flink does not have, you know, a built-in storage um, a component, we need some other mechanism to buffer this event so that if we want to do something like a batch workload, uh, which is something that Apache Flink uh, can also do, we can do that effectively. So uh, Apache Flink is very unique in the sense that it supports uh, batch workloads. It also supports stream, uh, in the streaming workloads. So you don't need to have separate APIs, so to speak, uh, to, to manage the streaming workloads if you have that, or manage the batch workloads if you have that. So uh, it is designed so that the API is very uh, similar and you don't have to you know, relearn uh, every, you know, you know, everything you, 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 you've learned already. So with stream processing, you, you need to have this temporary buffering mechanism and with Apache Flink, we can use something like Apache Kafka to buffer that. We can also use uh, Blob Storage. We can also use Data Lake Store. We can also use Cosmos DB. So there are several mechanisms that we have on Azure today where we can buffer these events temporarily. Um, and then we can uh, use uh, the Flink data, data Stream API to, for, the, for the streaming workloads, uh, also, or, or, or use the Dataset API for the patch workloads. So I wanted to cover this overview because it's very important. Now, if you're still wondering what is the difference between stream processing and batch workload, I'm gonna use this metaphor to explain it. So if you can think about um, batch workloads as having a fixed set of uh, data. So the, the number of data that you have is, is bounded and it is fixed. So you don't have, once you start to, to do the compute where you need to process the, the events, uh, or the, the, the records or the messages, uh, uh, however you, you, know, you know, choose, choose to call it, the number of records you have to deal with is fixed. It's not changing once you start to, to, you know, to do the compute, but with, with uh, stream um, use cases, uh, the starting point and the ending point and the data set is not fixed. So this is something that is continuously changing and you have to change your mindset as well if you want to you know, uh, um, go with this use case. So with the, with the uh, batch, batch workloads, we have a fixed set of data. It could be one record, it could be a million records, but it is fixed. But with, with um, streaming workloads, you don't have any fixed set of set of records. It, it, you know, it is cons you know, cons con con continuously being processed. So you have to design your system to be able to react to these uh, events as they arrive. And also there's something like Windows operation that you have to consider when you're doing streaming workloads. So I wanted to uh, go over the summary again the core components because it is important for us to talk about some of the buffering mechanisms that are available. So like I said before, Flink does not have a built-in mechanism for storing this, uh, these uh, events. So on Microsoft Azure, we have uh, some mechanisms that we can use for this. So if you are trying to integrate with the Kafka API uh, for uh, Apache Flink, then we have several options on, on Azure today for that. So uh, you can use Confluent Cloud uh, to uh, set up the Kafka endpoints. You can use uh, Azure HD inside. You can also use event hubs to do these temporary buffering mechanisms. Uh, we also have, if you're having a batch workloads to, to, to run, then you can use blob storage or Azure Data Lake Store Gen 2 uh, for that. And then uh, through the Mongo API or through the Cassandra API, we have the ability to also do this as well. 
So um, the next thing I want to uh, cover now is um, my slide is frozen. What's going on? All right. So the next thing I want to cover now is uh, the deployment options. So for today on Azure, most of the options that are available are for us to do the either semi-managed option or the the full the, the self-managed option. Uh, we don't currently have a fully managed option uh, today on Azure for Apache Flink, but that's something that could change. So I just wanted to bring this up because some some people are you know asking for this. So uh, we are all, 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 always sending this feedback to our engineering team, and as soon as something you know is available for us to share with you, uh, I, I, I will let you know that as soon as possible. But at this time, most of the options that are available are either um, self-managed options or semi-managed options where partners are giving you a platform for you to run on Azure uh, for that. So we have the ability to use Azure Virtual Machine Scale Sets today. So with Virtual Machine Scale Sets, you can have uh, a, a custom image that you've created where Apache Flink and some of the dependencies could be bundled into that uh, Azure uh, image. And then you can deploy that Virtual Machine uh, Scale Set uh, to set up the task manager, to set up the job managers, or any other component that you need to run your Flink deployment. And then uh, we've also seen customers use the Kubernetes integration that is available today for, for Flink, and they set up Azure Virtual, uh, Azure Kubernetes service for this, and then they can deploy the Flink through Helm charts or through custom Kubernetes resources on, on Azure. We also have uh, two um, vendors today that have platforms that run. So Cloudera, uh, through, through the Cloudera data platform, you can also run Apache Flink on Azure today. And through the Viverica platform, you can also run uh, Apache Flink on Azure today. And then in terms of integration, so this is where the Apache Flink ecosystem is integrating with the Azure uh, ecosystem. So we have several capabilities that allows us to do this. So um, through uh, Cosmos DB, we have the ability to integrate with the MongoDB API or the Cassandra API. So if you're using uh, Apache Flink on Azure and you are thinking about a destination to send your data to, you can uh, use the uh, Cosmos DB and you can provision it using the MongoDB API or the Cassandra API. And that should allow you to push your data out of Flink uh, into Cosmos DB. We also have the JDBC things that are available today for Azure Postgres and MySQL or SQL Server. So if that's what you're considering to do, you can also use the JDBC sync and you can push your data to those endpoints. And then we're currently working in progress today. So um, I think coming coming in version 1.14 for Apache Flink, you should be able to use uh, the blob storage endpoint and the Azure Data Lake Store Gen 2 to integrate with uh, Apache Flink. And you can push your data using the uh, streaming file sync to push your data out into those uh, products. And then uh, for Apache Kafka, like I said earlier, um, you, uh, people are using this as a temporary buffering mechanism. So some, some people are using the, the Confluent Cloud uh, as their Kafka deployment uh, environment, and they are pushing data into uh, Kafka. And then once it gets into Kafka, then they can run their streaming workloads in Flink and then push it back into Kafka or some other destination of their choosing. Um, also through uh, event hops, uh, the Kafka endpoint for event hops, as well as the uh, Azure HD inside option for Apache Kafka, you can use this as well to set up the, the integration between your workload and Apache Kafka. So what have we covered today? Well, today we have covered just recently how to integrate with Azure. So if you're running Apache Flink on Azure, I, I have just briefly covered some of the workloads and, and some of the endpoints and products that are available for you to integrate between your Flink um, workload or architecture with Microsoft Azure. And I also brought up some of uh, the, the four options that are available today where you can use uh, uh, Azure Virtual Machine Scale Sets, you can use Azure Kubernetes Service, or you can also use the Viverica option as well as the Cloudera Data Platform option that's available. So um, that's all I had to, to cover today. And if you are ready to get started, I have this link where <clears throat> if you um, go on this link, you're going to see some of the links. And later on today, I'm going to update uh, this page with some of the resources that I have mentioned today. So I will show you the link where you go to see all these different integrations and how you can 
uh, set up set up your environment to integrate with these uh, options. There's also a form on this page where if you use your, your phone, you should be able to open this page using the QR code. But also there's a form that allows you to let us know your particular use cases on, on Azure and some of the workloads you are, you are doing either you're currently doing that or you're planning to do that. And if you have any questions and you need help with how to deploy Apache Flink on Azure or how to integrate between Apache Flink and Microsoft Azure, please feel free to reach out and I will take a look at that and I will point you in, in the right direction with our engineering team or product team to help you to get started. So you can also find me at my website on easyacademy.com or follow me on Twitter. And um, I thank you very much for your time today. And I'm gonna pause now for any questions that we have and we'll take a look at that uh, shortly. So thank you for your time and participation. Let me take a look at the chat now for any questions that we have. All right, so I see feedback from Mark. Thank you for the presentation. So, so far we don't have any questions, but um, um, let me bring up this form. All right, so Patrick, uh, there was not a uh, code presented. So I didn't present code, but um, I, have, I have a link to a page where, um, in a few days, I'm gonna I'm gonna share some some code for you to take a look, and I will have some tutorials. So, let me. So, if you if you head out to this page, I'm gonna be having a link to some of those uh, um, video tutorials, and um, and then you can use this form. To, to reach out to us if you have any you know any any workload or use cases that that you have specifically so at the top of this page i have a form that allows you to do that uh, if you can see my screen so i'm going to continue okay i'm going to post the link to this in the chat i had a qr code early, earlier that showed you how to do how to get it so that is the link to this page, um, I will be updating this shortly with some some hands-on videos, and then this is the form in the chat, so that if you have any questions about um, how to integrate, how to deploy, or there's something that you're trying to figure out and you, you're not able to do that, you can use that form and reach out to me, and I will get back to you within you know a few days. If I'm not uh, you know on PTO, I will get back to you um, and point you to uh, someone from our product or engineering team to, to get back to you as soon as possible. If you also have any feedback, um, you can also put it in the chat or put it on that form. I appreciate all, all the feedbacks. So in the in the session window, we have a Q&A section where you can post questions. I will be available for another 10 minutes. And then after that, you can reach out on, on social media or by using that form. But I'm really grateful today for your time and for your interest in this talk. Thank you very much for joining.